And there's just something altogether more enjoyable about working in a clean shop. And it was under, it was less than 40 when I come out here this morning. And it's almost, I got short sleeves on now, so it's uh, almost, when it gets up about 60 or so, I'm, I'm happy. Okay, when it hits 60, I'm going to turn that off and let the electric one, I got it, I got that one on low. Basically, I got it on for the fan so it will blow some air of this away. These things are nice, but they don't circulate the air. They just, the hot air just goes right up, and it's radiated heat. I mean, you can feel it on your hands, which is nice, but all that heat comes up, and it doesn't get circulated. So I did use that fan on low, and it does circulate the, the heat pretty good, but all it needs is just a little bit of movement, and that fan, I actually have another one that's about that size, that has a higher speed, I may get and set up there just through the winter. And uh, I think I am gonna go ahead and just use this to heat my shop. I do have a 20 pound tank and a hose that could connect to this, but I think I'm gonna stick to the one pound bottles. I got seven all together, and that's the last full one. When uh, this one empties out and I had to hook that one up, then I just go fill the other six bottles and stand them in here. They don't leak or anything. Okay. I am real happy about my clean shop. Uh, this is almost, I'm halfway done. I'm working on the spine right now. Sand and the grind lines out of the spine. I got that side sanded. I'm working on the spine. I got the bottom of the Ricasso sanded, and then I'm gonna work on this side. And I am gonna uh, clean up the rest of my shop, but uh, I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit before I go into the uh, two other rooms and sweep. Anyway, uh, also, here's my plan. I'm going to get deeper into Kydex. I've had a lot of people ask me for Kydex sheaths for, for my other knives like these. And uh, <clears throat> Kydex is a whole nother avenue of equipment and parts and uh, skill. And I have slowly gotten better at my Kydex, and uh, I'm really happy. I only make neck knife Kydex sheaths, but I've gotten good at it, and I figured out how to make the edges shiny and and the, <clears throat> the temperature you need to, you know, maximum temperature to heat them up, how flimsy you need to get the... the uh, kydex and before you know there's a point where you get them too hot and they curl up and burn so now i've gotten to the point where i know where to stop the heat <clears throat> how flimsy or sloppy they need to be how long to leave them in my press and uh you know i've actually bought uh, grommet setters that work better than the junk that comes with the the grommets and now uh, there's a company called knifekits.com and they basically sell more Kydex and parts than anything else. They sell these uh, scotch bright wheels. One is 400 and the other is 800 And uh, that's how you get the, sh the edges really, really clean and even and all the burrs knocked off. And then I go one step further and I run the edges on my buffer at a slower speed with some fine polishing compound and it makes the edges look shiny. There is another way to do it with acetone, but uh, I haven't tried it yet and I don't really want to because all you're doing is melting the kydex and you run the risk of leaving stains on the kydex. So I am moving into more kydex. I'm gonna make some uh, kydex sheaths for my larger knives like this and uh, maybe the dinner skinner. Uh, the BC Special, the Swamp Rat, and uh, I don't know about the Sharp Finger or not. When it has that much of an arc, it's really hard to, yeah, you couldn't do it with a Sharp Finger because this is too high. Actually, I may not even be able to do it with this knife, but all the knives that have a bowed spine, you'd be able to do it because uh, 
when the kydex compresses around this, you'd have a hard time getting this past the area that compressed to this. See what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, I don't think I could do it with this knife, but I could do it with the, uh, three finger, the four finger, the dinner skinner. I don't no, I couldn't do it with sharp finger. I could do it with the BC special and, uh, the swamp rat. That's it. Three, four knives. And, uh, I'll be getting some, uh, God, uh, tech locks. I think they're called tech locks where they screw onto the kydex sheath and they hook to your belt. And uh, it's a really kind of high tech way to attach them to your gear. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, I haven't ordered them yet. I just ordered these and these were like eight bucks each. And I got to money is really tight this time of year. So I got to go slow on getting stuff. You know, I got to sell a knife and then whatever I get for that knife, I got to use that carefully to buy more sandpaper and stuff like that. And one more thing. I'm going to try a steel called 80 CRV2. It's the characteristics, the heat treating temporary characteristics are similar enough to 1084 that I'm certain I, I can use it and come to a, a, a good hardening temperature and the, the right tempering temperature. The tempering temperature is the same as 1084 and the hardening temperature is just a couple hundred degrees over 1084, which I can reach no problem in my forge, and you got to hold it for a little longer. So that's to my understanding, and I, I got this from the Knife Steel Nerd. If you don't know who that is, and you're curious about knife steels, uh, he's got a YouTube channel called Knife Steel Nerds, and he wrote a book called, uh, I think it's called Knife Engineering or something like that. Anyway, he's the go-to guy for information about hardening steel and what steels work best for, you know, what knife makers and, uh, you know, depending on what equipment you have and stuff like that. Okay. I'm uh, going to get back to sanding. There's just something about sitting out here, you know, the whole world is just disintegrating, caving in around us, and it will never be the same as we knew it when we were growing up. And, uh, you know, I'm just sitting here, nothing is really affecting me, and I'm facing, you know, surgery, uh, actually, possibly two types of surgeries at the same time, but, and, you know, the world, and money, and, uh, and none of that seems to bother me much when I'm out here sanding away on a knife, watching a little grit TV. Lone Ranger, by the way. Hi ho, Silver! And uh, I just finished watching uh, Terrell Fixes All video. So, uh, you know, the world's not all bad. There's still these moments of peace and quiet and uh, tranquility and happiness that you you know, you can enjoy in between all the other bad news and uh, the knowledge that basically the world is going to hell in a handbasket. All right, I'm going to get back to sand, and I'm on the last side here, and I just wanted to say that after you sand the initial steel, the initial grits out, it is the, it is the most important and the and the the one that you should dedicate the most effort and time to is the first grit because this steel comes to me blemished and I have to sand down bolt you know beyond the blemishes and uh, I have some more steel that's at the house I haven't used it yet haven't even brought it down here I bought it from a fella in Austin he's a local guy it's called Texas it's either Texas knife steel or Texas steel and the guy that owns it, his name is Mike Turner. We're friends on Facebook. And uh, I just bought my very first piece from him. And I'd rather do business for the same price with a local person. You know, I mean, when you consider I was buying from New Jersey Steel Baron. Austin is, you know, more or less local to me. Just a couple hours, well, a few hours away from me. So, uh, 
I'll be using that steel, and I I got a feeling it's better steel than what New Jersey Steel Baron has been selling me. As a matter of fact, uh, Knife Steel Nerds just did uh, a video on where these different companies get their steel. And I don't think my guy is getting his steel from New Jersey Steel Baron because New Jersey Steel Baron is getting a foreign steel. And uh, I there's two or three other suppliers, and they're not getting it from the same place that New Jersey Steel Baron is getting it from. And <clears throat> the only reason I was buying it there, <clears throat> because the longer lengths... You know, I, there was a couple of times there about 16 feet cut into four foot lengths. And, uh, you know, the shipping didn't kill me. Well, now the price of steel has doubled and the shipping has nearly doubled. So uh, it cost me less to have the same amount of steel shipped from Austin than New Jersey. Okay, enough of me boring you with things that are you don't care about. So I'm going back to saying that I'm almost, not 30 minutes, I'll have this thing. The, the most important grit sanded and then from there it goes quicker and quicker as you progress in grits so uh i'm probably just going to get this sanded up to the first grit here and then go clean my other two rooms up okay i grind the bevels at 60 grit and then i put a 120 grit belt on and i smooth them out and and fine tune the bevels and bring the bevel right up to my line that i scribe and then a hand sand starting at 150. Well, that's 180 right now. 150, got all the grind lines and the imperfections and flaws that came with the steel. Uh, you know, surface imperfections, just uh, visual flaws. Now I move to 180, and then it begins. 180, 220, 320, 400, 500, 600, 800, buffer, heat treat, come back to 600, clean it all up, 800, rebuff, handles, but I'm stopping right here for a second. <clears throat> these are a uh, half inch arbor. And uh, I have to go drill these up to 9 16 because my grinder that I'm going to put these on is uh, 9 16. Uh, I'm sorry, 5 8 5 8 inch arbor. So uh, I got to take it out to my big shop where I have the big drill bits out there. I got a half inch. I got a 9 16 out here, but it's not big enough. So. Yeah, I'm going to go drill these out and get them on my bench grinder and figure out where I'm going to mount that bench grinder. And um, also, the room where I do my leather, it's also where I do most of my kydex. But I have to come in here and cut it on that. And then I do a little bit of sanding on that. And um, I'm thinking of doing all the kydex in the other room. And the reason is this room gets so dirty and gritty, it's hard to keep the kydex not getting contaminated with all the dust and the metal grit. And what that does is scratch the blades as they go in and out of the kydex. So uh, eventually I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna do way more kydex for my knives and I'm gonna try to do all of it in that room where the leather is. So I'm gonna have to kind of rearrange in there, get rid of some stuff that I just have because I have nowhere else to put it. Like there's a big dresser hutch kind of thing in there i really have no use for it and uh there's a big corner desk in there and i can use that whole wall to put the things that i would use including bolting my my grommet press down uh a small jigsaw uh the grinder with these uh wheels on it a, a drill press that i already have in there that i drill for the grommet so Eventually, all my kydex is going to be in there, and I won't have to come in here to do any of it, which, uh, you know, that's my goal. So right now, I'm going to go uh, drill some 9 16 holes in that, get them mounted on that bench grinder, and then I'm probably going to go to cleaning these other two rooms up, and then whatever time left is in the day, I'll come back and uh, start sanding on this again. Here we go. Remember, safety third. Five eighths arbor. All right, back to the drawing board. All right. right.
Okay, one down. Now I gotta sweep up in here.